Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome today back to the farm again. And uh, as you can see behind me, I've got the, the Richard Weston muck trailer, which I'm going to wash off today. I've got a uh, clover out as well. Tove? Hey! <laughs> Go on then. This is the Mashia mower, which uh, was covered in grass seed the other day. And I just uh, literally just swept it all off, but it could do with a, a wash as well probably, and it will be put away soon for winter, so it's going to have to be put inside in the shed. Oh, this was the grass, which is all on there, this sort of stuff. I've had all the grass seeds growing back <laughs> on, the, uh, on the mower there. And then this is the feeder bucket, which we use for feeding the cattle. It's a KW Farm Services bucket, and I think it's been featured in some videos before, and uh, we've recently just got it ready for feeding out in winter. So we had to grease it up make sure that everything was all right. Unfortunately, it's just got a bit of water in there at the moment when I brought it out the other day. Job this morning is to uh, just get the Richard Weston looking nice and smart again. So I'm just gonna have to get rid of all of this muck in the air. I don't actually know how much muck was left in there from yesterday. Uh, there is a little bit of muck in here, but uh, nothing too major. I'll just shovel all of that out. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop off the feeder bedder and put on the muck trailer so I can just take it across the road and give it a good wash down. Okay, so hopefully you can now see that the trailer's looking a lot, lot cleaner than it was. Um, I haven't done the best job in the world, but at least the sides are all clean, and I've just been in, in the back recently. I'm just, um, just gonna be careful this thing doesn't come down. <laughs> um, I've just washed out the back as well, and uh, there's some mud just at the end there, which was sort of stained onto the side, or soil, uh, muck, sorry, and uh, I've just done the, the top there as well. But yeah, generally just tried to clean up the trailer from all of the muck carting. So I'm just gonna take it now to the workshop, and I'm just going to give it a bit of a grease up because down below here are some grease points which have got to be regularly greased just to make sure that the trail is in good order and I think as well there might be some grease points for the brakes, so for the hydraulic brakes in there as well. Okay, so trailer washed off. I've got the, uh, the tractor here now and the feeder bedder which is on the back. This is the feeding machine for feeding all of the animals in the winter. And uh, as you can see, I've just put the PTO on and just put the whole thing on. And there's a side chute there as well. And the trailer has been washed off and put away. So she's quite an old trailer actually, this Richard Weston. We bought her off a, uh, an arable farmer who was quite a small arable farmer, I think with just a couple of hundred acres and uh, used to come out once a year at harvest. And uh, to be fair, it's been kept in really nice uh, overall condi condition all of its life. So when it's here getting covered in muck, I think it's just important to try and keep it clean and to also as well just make sure that everything's greased up to just try and preserve the life of it really and just, uh, just keep it going really. Because it's uh, an early 2000 model, so uh, it's getting on for nearly 20 years old now. So it needs a lot of attention and uh, just a bit of TLC really. Okay, so trailer put away. We're just going to go and check the turnips now before I wash off the canam here because as I said in yesterday's video, it's actually getting pretty dirty as you can see uh, down below. So yeah, it's going to have a really good clean off. But first of all, we've got to go and check the turnips on Vicarage Field. Come on, Tober. Hup, up. Get up. Hup, up. <laughs> In hand. 
Whee! There you go. Go on, stay, stay. Hop, hop, get in there. Go on. Stay, stay. Good girl, stay there. <laughs> okay, very strange this year on the field because... Come on, Dave. On the field here, the turnips have come up, but it is a bit bizarre because there's a lot this year of shooting barley which has just come up. So I'll try and show you what I mean. So just have a look at the crop of turnips here. Down below, we've got quite a bit of shooted barley which is actually coming up and it's like that across the whole of the field more or less and pretty pretty patchy in places oh clover's just yep <laughs> um, but it's not the end of the world because livestock on the farm will actually eat the uh, barley shoots whether it's barley shoots or turnips they'll eat pretty much any sort of vegetation um, on the farm so it's not it's not uh, like I say the end of the world um, but the turnips have come up not as well as they should have done because it's, uh, it has been very very dry and if we just look down below quite patchy very very patchy here you know there should be turnips here it should be there should be a lot more coverage of turnips on this field and there isn't so they haven't done very well unfortunately this year and the other thing as well is that the bulbs haven't even really come up yet. Um, I've only spotted, there's one bulb just come out there. Um, but for the, for the most part, they're all pretty much still in the grounds. Um, so hopefully they'll do a little bit more growing before the livestock actually come out here. Because as it is at the moment, there's just not a huge amount of food on here for them to eat over winters. And just on the field here are the uh, bales which I stacked earlier in the year. And they've been sort of surrounded by shooting barley, which is just growing up. Um, but generally speaking, they haven't been damaged too much by the rain. Um, they've just sort of formed a crust on the top. Um, but yeah, not uh, not damaged too much. I'm probably going to take in some of these bales over the winter months. Here she comes. <laughs> Hello. We. Go on, go on, Dave. Whoa, look at that. Hey, oh, 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 oh. You're like a spring chicken today, you are. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad life on the farm. A lot of people, I've got a lot of friends who live in towns and cities and things, and, and uh, in some ways they feel sorry for me being out here, you know, in the middle of nowhere. But uh, to be fair, it, I kind of feel sorry for them in some ways. Um, I wouldn't really like to be stuck in a town or a city, to be fair. But I suppose it depends on, you know, how you're brought up and all of that sort of thing. Um, but having the freedom on a farm is just something which you can't take for granted. And I, I, I do sometimes take it for granted being on the farm because you've got so much space um, to go and do things and you've got so much fresh air and it's so quiet and peaceful as well. That's the other thing. Um, whereas in the cities, it's a hustle and bustle. I love the cities. I love going to London. I love going to Norwich and, uh, you know, going to do some shopping and things. Nowadays, of course, you can just buy everything online. Um, so you don't really need to even do that anymore. Um, but no, it's uh, a different way of life, I think, in the countryside. And uh, I think, you know, it's something you'd get used to if you live in the city now. And I think if you lived in the, and I think if you've grown up uh, in the countryside and you were to move to the city, it would be quite a shock to the system. Um, but yeah, I think both ways of living are, you know, have their pros and cons. But yeah, just a lovely um, end of the day here on the farm with the sun just going down and Clover just, Clover just being Clover. <laughs> I've just spotted down here we've got some field mushrooms here which are just growing on the margins they often grow towards this time of the year just last Sunday actually we had some field mushrooms which were picked off the farm and uh, we had them with our Sunday breakfast and they were absolutely fantastic I think uh, a lot of people have forgotten uh, what mushrooms taste like it's only when you try some of those some wild mushrooms that you actually realize that they do actually have a, a really lovely taste to them that's one thing about living in the countryside is you can do a bit of foraging and uh, you know we've got apple trees on the farm as well we've got a plum tree there's cherry trees as well and often when i'm topping i'll pick some cherries on the farm and it's just absolutely fantastic um eating something which you've seen it grow and you know exactly where it's come from and it's just totally organic and there would have been no pesticides put on you know the cherries for example which we eat or the apples um, so it's a very um, unique way of living and I think nowadays you know the rural way of living is sort of dying because everyone's moving into the cities but it's not so bad it really isn't and uh, it's something I've grown up with all my life and uh, I absolutely love living in the countryside and I don't think I'd ever change it for the world. Okay so I'm now going to take the Can-Am here for a bath. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have you know what to do guys. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for plenty more content and I will catch you guys on the next one.